Okay, so um, there's Thunder. So we are getting right into really delve into the 2019 Tomoru Shinobi Keiko. We always start the Keiko with me having three readings uh, out of the Tomoru Shoden Namaki. So if you guys don't have the book, Tomoru Shoden Namaki, you guys want to get that, especially all my students and supporters. Uh, it's one of the books that I wrote it is available on the website. And um, a lot of the information regarding the Tomoru, its history and tradition is within that book. Um, but I always start all the Tomoru camps reading the, an introduction of the history. Then we go over the five warrior laws and the seven uh, shinobi kun, uh, just so we can kind of get our minds right regarding um, the training of this particular camp, right? According to legend, the origins of the Tomoru tradition of shinobi jutsu was developed in the Kimu Restoration as a samurai tradition that had its primary focus in the use of the short sword, kodachi, as well as several different kobuki, old weapons. It was during this time, 1333 to 1336, in the Shiga Prefecture, known as the Omi Province before the prefectural system was established, of Japan that Gohei Tomo and two other samurai, Jinsuke Tomo and Senrai Ukutagawa, developed this method of warfare to serve as a means of self-protection for their families, their village, and their, and their feudal lord. As Japan entered the Sengoku period, it was during this time that the art flourished in other areas such as Boryaku, which is tactics, Choho, which is espionage, Inton Jutsu, which is escape and concealment, Zetsumi Jutsu, which is assassination, which then became the strength of the samurai tradition. It was these methods of guerrilla tactics that would later be known as Tomoru Shinobi Jutsu. So looking at this in its in its origins, we're talking 1333 to 1336. Originally, it was Otomoru, and it was a sword school, but it had a primary focus on the short sword, right? Um, and then as it went through, once it hits the Sengoku Jedi, now we're talking the age of the warring states, they then changed their name from Otomo to Tomo, which we'll talk about that a little bit later. But they, the family surname actually changed from Otomo to Tomo. At that time, they started developing a different type of an art because of the time period of Japan. So then they started doing other things such as Boryaku, Choho, Intan Jutsu, Zetsumi Jutsu, Shinobi Jutsu, etc., etc. This was the time period where it kind of evolved and became a more of a ninja tradition than your typical samurai conventional Bujutsu school. Okay? We'll keep going on a little bit more. As the lineage of the Tomoru continues, the 17th Soke Nakashima Fumio trained in other family traditions such as Nakamoto Ryu, Kobayashi Ryu, Nakashima Ryu, and Akutagawa Ryu along with Tomoru. So Tomoru was already there, the 17th Soke of the Tomoru, but he had trained in numerous other systems, okay? Or martial traditions, samurai traditions, however you want to word that. And that was, Naka, uh, was called <coughs> Nakamura Ryu, Kobayashi Ryu, Nakashima Ryu, and Akutagawa Ryu. It is with these teachings that Nakashima Sensei compiled all of his Bujutsu training and combined that with the training of the Tomoru, calling this method of training Tomoru Shinobi Jutsu, which means Door the Fierce uh, School of Stealth. So basically, we're talking now at a time period of the 1890s, right? And we can get into a little bit more of like these family name, the, the, the place names, and the, all that kind of stuff. And we'll do that a little bit later in the camp. So I think that's kind of an important aspect that I'd like to add to the camera. But at this time, we're talking the 1890s, which was the Meiji era. That's a different time period. Uh, it, was, it was looked down upon to teach ninjutsu and bujutsu at this time. We're not talking 1333 anymore. We're talking like you know, 1890s going into the 1900s, you know, so 140 years ago, 150 years ago, give or take. So what he did to make it acceptable in that time in Japan, he just takes all of his training and says, I'm going to create everything I have and I'm going to call it Tomoru Shinobi Jutsu. Does that make sense? And then from there, that's where the school then starts to flourish. So even though I'm the 21st Soke of this tradition, because Tomoru, right, is, is the major lineage that we go through. However, that Tomoru line that we're talking about, the, what we have now in the present day, the majority of what we have written down, preserved, the kuden and things like that, the majority of it is written and passed down by the 17th Soke 
not that we don't have documents and stuff predating that. I don't want to you know, misguide people on the camera. However, the majority of it, from a, what's written down and what we have, it's written down in a time of peace. Because in a time of war, you would never write it down. Why would you get caught being a spy? You know what I mean? I mean, even the Bon Sin Chu Kai was written in 1676. It wasn't written in the 1500s. It's written in 1676. You know what I mean? So, you know, and you'll find a lot of schools like that where uh, a lot of their major documents are written, you know, after, after the warring period. You have people that then put pen to paper and they start trying to preserve the teachings and preserve the art and to be able to push it into the, the modern day, right? Or to, to be able to preserve it for the modern day and, and for future generations. Yep.